My Shire Farm. Uh, we are going to get into some things in just a second, but before I do, uh, if I could just make sure that you could hear me, uh, that would be wonderful, and then we will get going. I've had some phone issues all day, but I think they are all resolved, um, so I'm hoping so. So, Verna, can you hear me okay before we begin? All right, wonderful. Thank you. So we've got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, we're going to change some things up for a while on our live feeds. Uh, so I'll go into that in just a second. Um, but if you can hit the uh, like button, support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. Um, it helps with a lot of stuff. I've been researching that other than just making me feel well. Uh, it actually does do a lot of interesting stuff. So um, that being said, uh, I do want to talk about a couple different things and how we're going to change some things real quick, and then we will get into your uh, questions and answers. So if you have any questions, we do three different things every live Q&A that is not going to change. One, let us know where you're from. It's always interesting to see where all the uh, self-sufficient quail people are in the world, uh, so do that. If you've hatched any eggs from us in the past week, let me know what the hatch rate was and what you ordered. Uh, we'll mark that down for our records. We're sitting at a 75.1% uh, hatch rate on shipped eggs for the year, which is fantastic. Um, and then the third is uh, you ask the questions about Caternix quail or anything that that involves, and I will do my very best to help you on your journey with Caternix quail. So we do that every Sunday, that's not changing. But there are a couple things that I wanna get your feedback on and uh, as well as, um, well, we'll get into that in just a second. But first and foremost, let's get the big elephant out of the room, shall we? Um, we had an incident with a spider last week on my live Q&A and uh, it, was, um, <clears throat> it was a trying time for me, I'll, I'll say the least. Um, someone posted on uh, Facebook, you know, a mockery of it, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Um, I swear to God the thing was this big. It was massive. Uh, it was a wolf spider. It was carrying another spider on top that it had killed or something, um, and uh, it had a bunch of babies. And so uh, I've had a conversation with a lot of the babies down there this week, and we have made a an agreement that if they stay away from me, I will stay away from them. And uh, so far that's worked out fine, except for two of them. They would not listen, so they are no longer here on the farm. Um, but uh, that was, uh, well, Jenna got a kick out of it. Um, my wife and pretty much everybody here at My Shire Farm never watches any of my videos ever. They have no idea what I do. Um, they all decided to watch it, like the last 15 minutes of it. And uh, so I'm not living that down. Um, so. Uh, but everything's fine. I wanted I wanted to show up like five minutes late, and then everybody would be like, oh God, the spider got him. But uh, I've got a lot of things to talk about, so uh, we're not gonna do that. But everything's fine. We've worked it all out. Thanks for your support. <laughs> uh, second is 18 and under contest. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to be doing a new video about it shortly. I did do a video about a month or two months ago about it, uh, but we're gonna be doing a different one uh, coming up um, in the next couple of weeks before the next uh, 18 and under contest winner. We do it every month and it's anyone that's 18 or under and uh, we'll be changing that up as well for the good. Uh, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. I'm very excited to bring you some ex exciting news on that front. <clears throat> and um, so if you are interested, if you're under 18 or if your kids are under 18 or your grandkids, your nieces, your aunts or nieces or nephews or whoever, a friend of a friend, uh, and you want to get them involved with Caternix Quail, teaching them self-sufficiency, um, entrepreneurship, responsibility, uh, taking care of animals, so on and so forth, you want to email Jenna, uh, which is J-E-N-N-A at myshirefarm.com. Uh, Verna, if you'll be so kind to put that on there for me, uh, because my email is on the fritz. Uh, so somebody's working on it, but, uh, I'm not getting anything. Um, I'm getting like two emails a day and usually they're spam. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. So, uh, somebody's working on that. So if you've tried to email me, um, I'm not responding because I don't know about it. Uh, and, uh, they seem to be hitting a snag. So I don't know when it'll be back up. So at the very top of the comment, uh, I put my phone number. If you want to get a hold of me this week, you want to uh, text me 
or call me. Text would be better for me. Um, and, uh, and we'll try to do that. But you want to email Jenna at MyshireFarm.com for the contest. Give us a little bit of information about yourself or the person that's under 18, um, why they want to do it, uh, their age, their name, where they're from, things like that. And we pick a, a winner every the first Sunday of every month. Um, and they get, uh, well, I'll be doing a video about it. But as of right now, they're getting free hatching eggs from us as well as um, a Winola Ranch cage, all for free just to help them get started. So that's very exciting. Um, starting next week, so I'll be, I'm committed to doing two YouTube videos a week. With that being said, um, the first couple of minutes uh, of the YouTube video or of the YouTube Live every Sunday, I would like to dedicate to any questions about that so people aren't waiting around and they just want to get off, but they want their their uh, question answered. So the first few minutes of every YouTube Live going forward is just going to be about the topics of the previous week's videos. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I will get to all of them. Uh, so feel free to comment your questions now. If you can bear with me and be patient, I will get to your questions. Um, so I would like to do that and, um, well, we'll leave that for, we'll leave that for a little bit. So I think that is all I have. I do believe, I think, uh, there's two things on here, but we might get to those later or I might bring them up at another time. We've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got a lot of stuff planned. Um, I was planning on doing a, just an overhaul of everything this year. Um, and between this, that, and the other, Murphy's Law hitting us, and this hitting us, and QuailCon being needed to uh, be taken care of, I just didn't get to everything. So I'm getting to everything now. Um, so uh, bear with me on that. All right, I think I have bored you enough. Um, that's seven. I, I, I haven't. I have not bored you enough. I want to talk about one more thing. Before I do, it would be really helpful if you hit the like button and support the channel and me. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. Makes me feel real good. I try to hit 100 likes every uh, live video uh, just because that was my goal. Uh, I want to increase that goal, but not yet. Um, and if you can, support the channel by subscribing to the channel. I'm telling you, I've got a lot of very interesting stuff coming your way, as well as the bell notification. Uh, there's a bell. You hit that, and it's a, you'll hit like all. Uh, and it'll give you notifications every time I post a new video or like a reminder that I'll be going live or things like that. Um, and that would greatly help our channel. So I would really appreciate if you did that. Now, with that being said, um, there's some things that I really, really want to do. Um, and uh, I promised that we would do the quail for profit. So that's what we're going to do. I kind of feel like the the other aspect that I really want to do is more time sensitive, um, but I promised the uh, quail for profit video, so that's what we're going to do. But in our next playlist, after this quail for profit is is over and all the videos are posted and we've discussed it, uh, we're going to go into a self-sufficiency um, mindset here, uh, including the videos. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a whole lot more self-sufficient here on the farm. And we're going to do a lot more videos of self-sufficiency with Caternix quail. Um, so we're going to be using a quail tractor uh, to, uh, to write down our research so that we can better help you with that. Uh, we're going to put them in the aviary to help you with that. We're going to put some cages outside uh, so that we can help uh, better give you information as far as that goes. Because we have our quail barn because it's a business, right? Um, but I really, really, really... Uh, feel very strongly about trying to get a lot of people involved with self-sufficiency. Um, and not just that. Jen and I wrote down a list this week of things that we want to do. Uh, we want to get some solar panels uh, to have for a couple of freezers and the fridge and the well pumps, um, just in case anything happens. Uh, we want to start bees. We've got goats that we were going to get rid of, but they are meat goats, so we're actually going to keep those. Uh, and we're actually going to get a dairy goat as well. Uh, just so that we could have the dairy if need be. Uh, there's a couple other things that we've got written down. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to share our experience. So I, I hope that you guys would be interested in that. Uh, and if you guys want to travel along with us and do it with us, that'd be awesome. Uh, but if you at least want to know about it, and that would be cool too. If you don't want to know about it, then that sucks. But that's fine. Um, but uh, I really want to get into this self-sufficient aspect. Uh, so we're going to be doing... 
Uh, we're going to be raising rabbits. We're going to be doing rabbit butcher videos. We're going to be doing quail butcher videos. We're going to be doing um, setting up solar panels. We're going to be building a, a uh, big pantry. Uh, we're going to be canning. I mean, a lot of stuff that I'd really like to get out there. So I said all that to say this. So I bored you for the past 10 minutes just to say this. You do not have to share my videos. You don't have to like them. You don't even have to watch them. I don't even care. But I would really, really, really appreciate anyone that has the same feeling as I do to start sharing videos that might help others get encouraged and inspired to do so. So like the first video I did this week on the Quail for Profit video, there probably wasn't a lot of information in there that was like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, it was more of just a, a refresh or something you knew maybe brought to the front of your mind or something like that. Um, I really want to get the information out there uh, to try to get more people involved with self-sufficiency. I do strongly believe that Caternix Quail is a fantastic way uh, to be more self-sufficient, and it's a great starter step. It's probably the best starter step out there, in my opinion, uh, other than a garden. Um, but uh, I think as far as animals go, it's wonderful. If you have no experience, Caternix Quail is definitely the way to go. Uh, but we all need, I think, to maybe branch out a little bit more, uh, rabbits or goats or uh, gardening or, you know, some off-grid solar panels, things like that. Um, so if you can, find videos uh, about this subject that inspire you or educate you or encourage you um, and share those videos. I don't care whose they are. It'd be great if you shared my videos, but I don't care. I just want the... I, I really want... Um, a whole community that is, that's what I look at you guys as, is a whole community. Um, you know, this is a, a, a quail community, but it, it seems as though that we all work together, we're all friends, uh, we're all supportive of each other, and things like that. I'd like a huge community to really start spreading the word uh, about everything. Um, and I really do believe that the best way to do that, to be honest with you, is Caternix quail. They're easy, they're fast, anyone can raise them, and it's not very discouraging. Um, so I am going to push that, uh, but if you will be so kind to help me do this, uh, I would greatly, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So let's get to your questions. I'm so sorry I bored you. Uh, again, hit the like button. I'm sorry, I've been doing a lot of research on YouTube and how to spread the word more, and it tells me to just keep badgering you to hit the like button, so I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, so hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. There is a dollar sign at the bottom of the comment section. You do not have to, but if you do donate, uh, it's like a super sticker, super chat. Really, it's just a donation to the channel. If you do do that, uh, we are going to be putting that money back into YouTube one way or the other, whether it's we're going to buy supplies to build something to show you how to do it, uh, or building, you know, getting uh, bee equipment and, uh, and getting some people out here. I've already contacted the um, Montgomery County Bee Association. I've already contacted uh, our local feed mill. I've already contacted a farmer that we know that's been farming for 76 years. He's 98 years old. Um, and he's going to come out and uh, we're going to take care of him. We're going to pay him a little bit and we're going to do um, kind of a, a, you know, an interview back and forth. Uh, maybe live, maybe not. Haven't gotten that far, but I'm trying to set a lot of stuff up. Uh, so any donations that you do is going straight back into that just to start getting the word out um, because, frankly, everybody, um, the world is uneasy and uh, we need to maybe not be crazy, uh, but being prepared is never a bad thing, ever. So uh, we definitely need to be more prepared here. Um, we've got enough animals that we could be okay, uh, but we have no water uh, if the power goes down because it's on on the grid. Uh, so uh, there's the big issue. All of our uh, freezers, you know, we have enough solar panels for off-grid for one freezer, which would not be enough for the whole family. So there's a lot of different things that we want to do. And we'd like you to share that, that, uh, that process with us. So I hope that you would enjoy that. Let me know in the comments if that sounds something that you would be interested in. And I feel like I'm just rambling on for the past 15 minutes. So I apologize. Let's get to your questions. Okay, <clears throat> um, Jeff is in the house. Greetings from central Missouri. Super excited as I have chicks hatching as we speak. I decided to collect eggs for seven week 
old birds just to see 74 went into lockdown and four have hatched so far that's great congratulations and best of luck to you uh seven week you're should be okay but you're still borderline um but i mean even if you get half to hatch even if you get a 50 percent hatch rate that's better than what you had right so um episode one was great start small with the basics thank you very much uh we did post yesterday about the first quail for profit video uh, if you have any questions about that or maybe topics that we might be talking about uh feel free to let me know if you have questions that i have not covered yet about quail for profit i might give you a very short answer or tell you that that's coming up or you know i'll be happy to discuss it but i don't want to give too much away because then it's just a repeat so but thank you very much um the first video was kind of basic uh but i thought that was um that that's a big mistake people make is they don't they don't have a foundation um and that's very very important so thank you very much jeff so swanson's in the house greetings from memphis let's hope this is a spider free episode uh we've i think we're all good i think we all understand each other i hope and if not i've Got my lighter right there. Um, let's see. Trudy is in the house. And Richard, hello from Clinton, Arkansas. Welcome. Uh, not talking to me. Not talking. Hello. Uh, Vern is in the house. Evening, everyone. Zach, the first installment of Quail for Profit was great. Thank you very much. Obviously, Verna is uh, Verna and Beth Reed are our moderators for YouTube, uh, as well as Newbie Quail Lovers Facebook group. So uh, we owe them quite a bit. She is very, very helpful. Uh, so thank you for all of that, as well as, I did not mention this, we did a contest. Uh, so if you like fun, if you like contests, if you like uh, this kind of environment, uh, we've got a Facebook group, and it's called uh, Newbie Quail Lovers. And uh, we were the largest Facebook group uh, with Caternix Quail on Facebook until Facebook shut us down, so we are now starting over. And uh, I think we're only at like 1.8 thousand members, but that's 1.8 thousand members we can reach out to and, and help on their journey and, and work with each other. Uh, so uh, if you're on Facebook, join the group. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I lost my spot. Uh, still lost my spot. Uh, Jasmine Bass is in the house. Hello, friends. Welcome. Glad you're here. Dale's Quails is in the house. Good evening from Wisconsin, everyone. Welcome. Dale, if you're still on, um, if you could, we don't need a really, I mean, if you want to call, you can, uh, but if you can text me maybe tomorrow, uh, I just got a quick question for you about all the things that we talked about this week. Uh, if you can give me a text sometime when you're available, uh, I just got a quick question for you. Thank you. Uh, while we're waiting, Homestead's in the house. Hello from uh, Wyandotte County, Ohio. Welcome. Glad you're here. Archie Johnson's in the house. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, let's see. James is in the house. Evening from Maryland. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Nikki James is in the house. Hello, all from the East Central Missouri. Welcome. Uh, Jasmine says, My Shire Farm. I always watch the first video for Quail for Profit. I also, oh, I also watched the first video for Quail for Profit, and I am now super stoked for the rest. This quail thing has turned into something my husband and I both really enjoy. Well, that's wonderful. That is great to hear, and I hope that I bring you a lot more information to think about and uh, avenues to go down, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, while we're waiting, Homestead says, great job on the first Quail for Profit video. Great advice in there. Build a good foundation. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys have any tips, uh, because this, this playlist is going to go on for quite some time. Uh, I've got quite a bit to talk about, and I don't want to do an hour video or anything like that. Uh, I did a 15-minute video on yesterday, and it took me four hours to load it, um, and that was super annoying to me. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep them... 15 minutes or under. Uh, so there's going to be quite a bit of episodes in there. If you have any suggestions, uh, you know, sound or, you know, I'm, I, here's the thing. I am not, I have no desire to be this YouTube sensation. No desire. As you can see from my videos, I, I talk to you. I try to give you the information. I try to say it in a way that's uh, informative as well as fun uh, and keeps you entertained, but I'm not doing all the I'm not doing all the, you know, crazy graphics and editing, and I just, I don't, I, that's not me. I'm a quail farmer that really just wants to spread the word. So, uh, as far as that goes, I'm not willing to do that, uh, but if, you know, there was a volume issue or uh, maybe something more in the comments that you would need to know or something like that, uh, feel free to let me know because I'd love for your feedback because we've got quite a bit of these
coming and the better I can get for you, um, works for you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Joan is in the house. Greetings from Southern Arizona. Welcome. S.O. Swanson says, I went away for the weekend, came back and swear my 32 new chicks tripled in size in a mere two days. Guess I'll have to split them up into two brooders and give them some room soon. Well, it sounds like they're growing and they're healthy and happy, so can't complain about that. That's wonderful. Good job. Um... Uh, S.O. Swanson says, I love that song. C. Yonk is in the house. Welcome, Chuck. Uh, Evening Quailers from Chandler, Texas. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Jasmine says, I really... Oh, wait. No, nope, it is different. I really appreciate that you set the tone that quail for profit is a lifestyle choice and setting a solid foundation is definitely a key piece. I've been doing lots of math on paper. Uh, yes, absolutely. And I really do think that it was important. I know that... It's going to take a couple of videos to really get into the meat of it. Uh, but if we're not prepared with a napkin and a fork and a knife and a plate uh, and a table to uh, to have our dinner, have our meal, uh, then getting to that meat is just going to crumble. Um, so uh, we, we got to get we got to get through some things first. But that's just what I believe. Uh, so thank you very much, because I believe that, too. But we do have a video coming uh, in the playlist about um, profit margin and um, uh, how much it costs to raise quail. Uh, we're going to talk about price points. Well, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to give you as much information as possible. Um, I'm going to hold about four or five things back because, well, I have to. Uh, but, I mean, I'm going to give you plenty, plenty of things that have brought us success that, that hopefully you can find something in to bring you success as well. And it doesn't even have to be quail. Uh, it can be, you know, um, uh, you know, a garden. Uh, you're selling, for, you know, stuff from a garden or rabbits or anything on a farm. Just homestead in general. Uh, so again, I'd really appreciate if you could help me by hitting the like button, supporting the channel, as well as sharing videos that really you really do like uh, to try to get the word out there more. Uh, A. Jones is in the house. Hi, Zach. Checking in from the northeast tip of Ohio. Welcome. Morgan is in the house from Savannah, Georgia. Welcome. Ed Got Bait is in the house. Welcome. Uh, Kasumi Rose is in the house. Great to see everyone. Uh, absolutely. Ed Got Bait actually texted me uh, Sunday night and uh, sent me a, a screenshot or a meme uh, of uh, uh, a guy that was in this big suit and he had a fire blower, a fire starter kind of thing, a uh, fire gun. And uh, they were just they were just tearing down this field with fire. And he's like, if get, if they come back, this is always an option. Uh, so that was pretty funny. Um, let's see, Cindy and Ryan's in the house from Smithville, Texas. Welcome. Your eggs uh, that you won last week just came out or just went out Saturday. Uh, I think, I think they went out Saturday, or they go out Monday. Nope, they went out Saturday. Uh, so you should be getting them Monday or Tuesday. Uh, Doc Holiday is in the house. Hi from Arizona. Welcome. Uh, I did not mention this, and I meant to, and I apologize, and I will going forward, but we will be doing giveaways every YouTube live video for the foreseeable future, so make sure we know that you're here, and make sure that, um, just make sure that we know you're here, because we'll be, uh, picking, uh, winners for 30 to 60 free eggs every week on our live show. Uh, Susan is in the house from Arkansas. Welcome. Archie is in Indian Town, Florida. Uh, welcome. Caternix Corners in the house from Florida. Welcome. Glad you're here. Ed Got Bay says, Why have my mail stopped crowing? Uh, well, it depends on a couple different things. Um, one, how old are they? Uh, two, they could be molting. When they go into molt, they really don't crow that much because they're not active, they're not sexually active. Uh, or very little anyway. Uh, they drop off tremendously. So it could be a molt thing, or if they're over about a year old, uh, then they're running out of steam, uh, would be my two main suggestions. Uh, uh, let's see, Richard Brown's in the house from East Tennessee. Welcome. Nick is in the house. Hello, everyone. Coming in from Evans, Colorado. Love the first episode of Quail for Profit. Looking forward to my next set of eggs coming from you guys. Absolutely. I saw that you just ordered. You'll be going out this week. And uh, thank you very much for the kind words. And uh, best of luck to you. Keep me posted on the hatch. Um, Edgar Bates says the spider was awesome. Yeah, that's what you think. You didn't. You almost didn't die from it. 
Uh, Joy says Maddox Farms in Georgia is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Nikki James is in the house. Contacted Department of Ag Agriculture for MPIP certification. They said something about all your birds being four months old. Anyone else hear this? Uh, yes. Uh, every state's a little bit different, but the minimum is usually three months old. Um, but yeah, they do have to be uh, three... I'm pretty sure the minimum is three months old in any state. Uh, our state is three months, uh, but he tries to do about four to five months old. Um, but uh, they have to be at least three months old to be able to test them. Uh, Santiago Lopez is in the house from St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome. Glad you're here. While we're waiting, Homestead is not talking to me. Jasmine says, hey, Zach, watching from southwest Missouri. I'm excited for all my auction eggs. I have my own eggs in the baiter, 25 Two week olds, 45 ready for freezer camp, and 105 ish growing out. Uh, thanks to this community. That's awesome. Congratulations. And uh, I will get your auction eggs out this week. We do have an auction page uh, on Facebook called My Shire Farm Coil Egg Auctions, maybe? I don't know. I think if you type in My Shire Farm, like the second one down is like an egg auction. And uh, we do auctions every weekend. I try to do a couple on Friday and Sunday. It just depends on my week. Uh, but I definitely spend hours on there Saturday talking to people, hanging out. Uh, we have fun together. We get really good deals on eggs. Um, it's a lot of fun, so you should check it out. I lost my spot. Here we go. Autumn Weem says, did you ever figure out what happened to the ex explanation of color, Colors Part 2? Uh, I have not. It is not on there. Um, and it's not set on private, uh, so I'm not too sure. Uh, I did find something where it said that it was on there, and now it's it, in the, on my back end. It says it's unavailable, uh, so it says contact YouTube, and so I did, and they said they'll will contact you within 48 hours, and that was Thursday. Uh, but I didn't know if 48 hours meant the weekend or not, so I'm assuming I'll hear back from uh, tomorrow. I, uh, except for I gave him my email and my email is not working. So if I don't hear back tomorrow, then I'll resubmit my, uh, question and give him Jenna's email. So that's a bummer. Uh, Donna is in the house from Illinois. Welcome. Frederick Sowers is in Delaware. Delaware's in the coop. There you go. I like it. I like that. Uh, Robin C says, hello, Zach and everyone in chat. Hope everyone is well. Much love from Michigan. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Edgar Bates has loved your late, latest video. Can't wait for more. Thank you very much. Uh, it is doing very well. I'm very happy with, uh, the likes on there. I'm very happy with the views. Um, wish people would watch it for a little bit longer. Um, but, uh, obviously I will have to entice them more, uh, to keep watching. Edgar Bates has loved, oh, nope, I already read that. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, William is in the house from Wisconsin. Welcome. Uh, Leonard from North Carolina is in the house. Welcome. Uh, do, do, do Robert Maddox, Maddox Farms here in Georgia near Athens. Welcome. Glad you're here. Stephanie Michelle Jones. Hey, Zach from Franklin. Well, Franklin, Ohio. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Doc Holliday says, Zach, what is your smallest color of quail? Uh, I have hatching time cage and the jumbo's poop is too big to fall through the bottom. The smallest one we have, I believe, are... I would have to look for sure, uh, but Scarlet's would be at the bottom. Um, they are small, but like amazing layers. There was another one I just thought of. What was it? Scarlet Tuxedos. So Scarlet's and Scarlet Tuxedos are definitely the smallest in weight, uh, but they are the most consistent in laying. Um, good question. Katrina says, hi, from Gilroy, California. The bright moon last night made my teenage boys wake up and start growing like it was like it was morning. There you go. Uh, let's see. Joy's in the house. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. David from uh, Texas is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Absolutely. Hit the thumbs up. Support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps with the algorithm. Uh, if you don't like me, then hit the thumbs down because that helps with the ag algorithm as well. Uh, and I don't, uh, don't frankly care, um, and, uh, subscribe to the channel. I do care about that. Uh, Cindy and Ryan says, I thought quail for profit video was great. Can't wait for the rest of them. Okay. I got it. Sorry. Um, yeah, I thought quail for profit video was great. Can't wait for the rest of them. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. 
Uh, Joshua says, ironically, the day your small business video was my first day of selling my quail eggs to local stores. Those eggs come from birds bought from my Shire Farms. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, well, that's a coincidence. Uh, pretty cool. Th thank you. And uh, best of luck to you and congratulations. Um, a lot of people talking. Let's see. Rip Skillion Garcia 4.0 says, question, how much smell comes from comes off the water tank? Does the extra water help cut back on smell? What? How much smell comes off the water tank? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. Like our poop system? I need more question because I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's not you. I'm sure I just... How much smell do, comes off the water tank? I need I need you to word it in a different way. I'll, I'll be happy to help. I just don't exactly know what you mean. I'm sorry. Whiskey Tango Farms is in the house. Hello, everyone from uh, Whiskey Tango Farms in central Wisconsin. Hope everyone is having a wonderful night. Uh, welcome. Glad you're here. Katrina says, I will be harvesting my first ever quail for my first ever hatch from my shire next weekend going to do cervical dislocation and use a drill attached plucker uh, advice is welcome. Very cool. Uh, we do have a couple butcher videos on our website. Um, so you can check that out. Not on our website. On our YouTube channel. Sorry, my girl is going crazy over there. Um, we do have, I'm going to start over. We do have a butcher, a couple different butcher videos on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, but, uh, you'll do fine. There's a ton of YouTube videos that will just walk you through it. And once you do one, two, or three, you got it down pat. It, it'll just take you a couple. Madison. No. Okay. Uh, C. Young says, enjoyed Quail for Profit video and looking forward to future videos. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Can you say happy birthday to my friend Nicker? He's a big fan. Well, thank you very much, and happy birthday. And I uh, hope you have a good one. Robin C. says, Quo for Profit. First video was awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, while we're waiting, Homestead says, it is my understanding that they will only test the ones that are four months old or older. We have breeders that are old enough. They will test up to 30 birds and what you have over four, or what you have over four months. Uh, usually, they max out at 30 uh, most of the time. Usually, they'll just do 30 birds. Um, in Ohio, they're only, they max out at 30, no matter how many we have. Um, but that's 30 total of all the animals. So because we have so many, they do 30 of our quail and then they go around and we do our ducks and our chickens and our geese and our peacocks and things like that. And that's separate. Uh, but usually for m most of it, uh, they just max out at, uh, at 30, 30 tests in general. Uh, Orlando says, hey, everybody from Phoenix City, Alabama. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Robin C. says, happy birthday, Nicker. Absolutely. Welcome. Glad you're here. And uh, happy birthday again. Yep. Um, do, do, do. Lost my spot. Sorry. Stephanie Michelle Jones says, hello. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Katrina says, that's awesome to have diversity in how you are approaching raising quail. Um we are starting that process. I mean, we've done all that before, but it's been years and years and years ago. Uh, but I do want to get back into it. So we're going to have quail outside. We're going to have them in the aviary. We're going to have them um, in a quail tractor. We're going to have them in a bunch of different areas and do videos on individual ones just so you know what works best for you and you can pick what works best for you. Um, but uh, I really, really have a passion to get more involved with the self-sufficient aspect of it and trying to encourage and entice people to really get involved with self-sufficiency and Katernix quail. Ed got Bates says, uh, Zach, great. Have you looked at the shelves in the uh, grocery stores lately missing tons of stuff? Not here yet, but I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure. Uh, Jasmine Bass says, question, I have gotten my dad really excited about the thought of adding quail to his homestead. Very cool. What would be a good number of birds to start with for him? Five adults and three grandkids live there five adults and three grandkids live there uh, very good question uh, if he's experienced with it you can always get more and if you're raising quail you know that it, it takes hardly any time at all to grow uh, with that being said I really don't think uh, 
I think a 50 count or a 110 count would be plenty to get started. Uh, the 25 count uh, we offer and, uh, you know, what we're, whatever works best for everybody else. I, I don't like the 25 count um, just because, you know, if you think about it, we're going to do averages, not us, but na national averages. With that being said, you know, you order 25, we send 30, we'll say 13 hatch out of those 13 you know, seven or eight could be males, maybe even nine. So now you really only got one set. Uh, and that is definitely not enough to take care of a family, even if it's just two people. Um, so uh, I like the 50 count. I think the 110 count, especially with the larger family that lives there, uh, that should get going. And and uh, if you need more, I'm here. Or they can always hatch their own. Uh, so that would be my advice on that. Again, support the channel by hitting that like button. I greatly appreciate it. I'm sorry I'm badgering you. I feel awful, but not enough to not do it, I guess. So hit the like button, support the channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I've got a lot of good stuff coming your way. Um, and uh, if you want to donate to the channel, it's the, the dollar sign in the comment section. Autumn Weems says, I'm so excited to watch all the self-sufficient self -sufficient videos. That's my goal in the long term. Thank you very much. And uh, that's good to hear. I'm glad that you're excited about it. Um, Nick James, Nikki James says, oh, they said they test all the birds. Maybe that's, uh, what they meant. There you go. Uh, Donna says, I have a USB port water bowl. If I got a small solar panel, will I be able to hook up to the bowl for winter? A USB port water bowl. If I get a small solar panel, will I be able to hook? I would need a lot more information about it, but I, ideally you would. I mean, logically you would, but I would need to look, know what it is. Uh, but yeah, it, it should be okay, depending on where you put it. While we're waiting, Homestead says, we are excited to become along uh, side you in the new journey. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, well needed. I'm trying to get some help here. Uh, we're going to start back all of our classes. We're going to do butcher classes. We're going to do uh, themed classes. Uh, we're going to do just uh, cookouts in general, just to start building a community around here. Um, because... Uh, you know, I just don't like the way things are going. So, and uh, I don't want to just do it myself. I want a community to do it. And if I can help encourage others or give education to others uh, to do it as well, then I think that I win. So uh, that would be fantastic. Um, real quick, I'm sorry. Hit the like button before I bore you anymore. But uh, if you guys want to watch a show... It's not as informative as I'd like, but it is very entertaining, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, there is a show on Netflix called Clarkson's Farm, I think is what it's called. It, if you type in Clarkson, you'll, it'll pull up. And it's the guy from uh, Grand, Grand Tarot, Grand, uh, I can't remember. He's British, and he's been around forever, and uh, he started farming, and there's one season of it. Uh, it's very entertaining, and if you look into it, you can kind of see what would work for you, what wouldn't work for you, just kind of some basic things. Uh, a lot of mistakes that he makes that are fun, but then you don't have to make the same mistakes. I really enjoyed that show, um, and we're going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to show you all the mistakes that we do, and you're literally, when we start this self-sufficient journey, you're literally going to be with us the entire time. So when we're trying to pick out which solar panels to buy or which freezers to buy or where to put stuff or what to build. Every time I hit my thumb on the hammer or run out of screws or fall off the ladder, you guys are going to see it. Um, and uh, I, I just want it. I want all of us to do it together. And then uh, we can all laugh at each other. Um, Ed got bait. Oh, not talking to me. Jasmine says, I am a beekeeper. Very cool. Been teaching beekeeping for seven years out here in Missouri. Ran a beekeeping club for five years. It's my other favorite hobby on the homestead. That's very cool. Um, I don't know if you and your husband would be interested, but I will be going through Missouri in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'd love to make a pit stop and maybe we could do a couple videos together for beekeeping. Uh, and I can post those down the road and you can teach me what I need to know because I just ordered beekeeping for dummies. Um, please consider Rumble as well. Facebook is wanting people to turn in people who prep. I can see YouTube axing self-sufficient channels as well. Um, I will not 
Grand Tour. That's it. Top Gear. Dang it. Yes. Thank you. Um, can you guys see me? Because I'm frozen on here. Am I good? Um, well. Repskillian Garcia 4.0 says, The quail's poop comes in handy in a victory garden. There you go. Uh, hello from Washington State. Adam says, Welcome. Glad you're here. Donna, what's your favorite quail and why? Uh, well, uh, Jumbo Wilds will always be number one. Uh, they're perfect for meat and egg production. They're the largest eggs. They're the largest meat. Uh, they're the easiest uh, to keep going. Um, and um, so everybody should have Jumbo Wilds, period. My favorite color, you know, I thought about this this week, and I've been saying that the Egyptian fees are, and I really do like them. I'm going to be honest. I really like the pansy fees. I just love them. Uh, George wanted to uh, do some different things with them, and I said no. And he's like, why? And I said, because they're my favorite, I guess. Um, so I'm going to say the pansy fees are my favorite because they're absolutely gorgeous. They're still feather sexable. They're a decent size. Um, they're enough to be self-sufficient. But, the, I mean, obviously, Jumbo Wilds are in a category all by themselves. But my favorite color would be uh, pansy fees. My favorite quail will forever be uh, Jumbo Wilds because I think everybody should have them in the world. Susan says, you, uh, you got it. We'll start sharing tomorrow. Well, thank you very much. Again, it doesn't even have to be mine. If you missed that, I will repeat it just very quickly. I'll start talking a lot faster because holy crap, I'm behind. Okay, so I'm going to start talking a lot faster. But here's the thing. I really want to get the word out on Caternix Quail and self-sufficiency in general and getting people encouraged, educated, enthused, excited. And um, I want to get the, I want to get that out there so that people really can start deciding uh, that this is for them. Because it is. We just have to tell them that it is and explain to them why. And then they're going to try it, and they're going to get addicted, and then they're going to keep wanting to do more self-sufficient stuff. So, if you have a video uh, on YouTube that you like, that has encouraged you or helped you or educated you or, or uh, encouraged you to jump into quail or be more self-sufficient... Uh, no matter whose channel it is, I do not care. But start sharing those videos because uh, we need to get the word out there. Um, and I'm going to be doing a lot more of that after this uh, Quail for Profit playlist is over. Uh, but we are going to do that first uh, because that is uh, what I, I said. So we're going to do that first. But we're going to really, really push this self-sufficiency. And I really need um, a community with me to do that. So I would greatly appreciate if you help doing that. Again, hit the like button, support the channel. I would appreciate it. Uh, jumbos, I'm guessing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you know what rabbits you're getting yet? We have silver fox and something else. For meat rabbits, the latter are at risk breed and need help. And mixed racks for the kids to show. Uh, no, it's whatever George has. And we're going to be buying some of those from George. And uh, moving some to a separate area. And uh, they get big. Like, they get, like, 20 pounds. So, those are going to be our meat rabbits. And then we're going to keep a couple of small, which is Rex, uh, a couple small ones just for fast, fast meat. Uh, with YouTube starting to crack down on community standards and uh, demon... How will this affect you? Um, well, if you read... Uh, Robin C. was asking pretty much uh, with Facebook and YouTube and all this stuff, kind of cracking down on a lot of stuff, uh, how is it going to affect? Well, uh, I'm not going to think about it. Uh, I have read the rules, and we are within the rules. Um, there are certain aspects that you have to do to not get shut down, uh, and we comply with all those. Um, and I frankly don't really care that much. Uh, I'm going to keep doing it, and if they shut me down, then I'm just going to rebuild and just go at it again. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I don't really, uh, I, I understand what you're saying, and if you are wanting to do that, I do recommend you looking at their uh, rules and procedures and guidelines and blah, 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 uh, which we comply with, and, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna win Facebook, I'm not gonna win, you know, uh, YouTube or anything like that, um, but I'm also not going to leave either, uh, because there's a lot of, here's the thing, mm, I can't say that, 
uh, there's a lot of people on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, everywhere else uh, that uh, still need to hear it. They still need to understand that they can get into this. It's something that they can do. Self-sufficiency is cool, and uh, and it makes you feel good, and it gives you purpose, and blah blah blah. And people need to hear it. And um, I'm not I'm not gonna leave them because Facebook's a jerk. Um, so I do understand what you're saying, and I get it. Uh, but uh, I really have a passion to bring people in. I really like the community, uh, and I really like. Uh, having a community around, but I don't, that's, uh, okay, I'm just going to tell you the truth, okay, here we go, hit the like button, support the channel, I just need one more like uh, to get my goal before I piss some people off, uh, once we get that extra, dang it. okay, here we go, so, QuailCon was amazing. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to do it next year. I can't wait to start the butcher classes again to meet new people and to have a community. And I'm, I really, really, I really like that. But that is not my passion. My passion is, is encouraging people and enticing people to get involved with self-sufficiency, getting involved with uh, what they eat, getting involved with meat and eggs, getting involved with raising their own uh, animals, thinking about being more self-sufficient. Self-sufficient is a lifestyle and a, a, a mindset and a choice just as everything else is. Uh, and there's a ton. I mean, majority of the U.S. just doesn't know. You just don't know what you don't know. I didn't know it. I mean, I, you, you, I would fill this farm up with things that I just didn't know, you know, and I still don't. Uh, but uh, when, I, when I met... Jenna, here's how crazy it is. When I met Jenna, we got married. We moved into this house. Uh, it was a repo, and uh, it didn't even have a ceiling in it. And uh, so we're doing all this work, and pretty much Dennis, Papa the Builder, says, uh, I can pay for your wedding, or uh, I'll give you a week worth of help at uh, the repo house. And I said, yeah, I'll pay for the wedding. You help me with the repo house because I don't know what I'm doing. So we went over there to kind of prep before the wedding and before Dennis got there. And um, I had never used a drill before and I didn't know how to do it. And so Jenna had to show me. And luckily, luckily, I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. Like she's like, I'm not trying to upset you, but you want me to show you? And I'm like, yeah, if you know how to do it, please, for the love of God, don't, don't be quiet, right? Um, so I'm not that kind of person. Like I don't, good. If you know how to do it, then I, I don't. So please do it. Um, and she, she kind of grew up, you know, Dennis has always been prep, uh, self-sufficient, this, that, and the other. Uh, so she grew up with a lot of that stuff. She, uh, had some land, so they had some animals and I didn't, I grew up downtown in the city, you know, it, I, I grew up downtown. We'll, we'll, we'll put it that way. Um, so we had a dog and I'm pretty sure we had a fish one time, but that didn't last long. Like it's just, you know, me and my mom and that, that's what it was. Right. Um, I didn't know any of this. None. I mean, it, it's just, it boggles my mind how far I've came in the past 12 years, just because I didn't know, you know, and I, I really have a passion for those that just don't know what they don't know. Um, and so I don't want to go away from Facebook because they're annoying or not post things on YouTube because, you know, they'll shut me down. I'll just start a new page and I'll just start over. I, they're not, they're not going to stop me. I mean, I might lose all my subscribers and I might lose my newbie quail lovers Facebook group again. And I might lose this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, I'm not doing it for views and I'm not doing it for this, that, and the other. I'm doing it to try to spread the word. Now, to help spread the word more, I've got to have more views, and I've got to have more subscribers, and I've got to do this, that, and the other. I get it, but that's a means to an end. That's, I have to do that so that I can do this, right? Uh, so I do hear what you're saying, and I agree, and I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, I've got my own opinions about all that, um, and it's not ideal, uh, but... Uh, those are the people that I really want to reach out to, if that makes sense without saying specific things. So, 
Uh, I went on a tangent. I am truly, truly sorry. I just said I had a hurry, and then I went on a 45-minute rant. I apologize. I'm going to get back to it. Here we go. Um, that's, that is all exciting, Zach. Well, thank you very much, Verna. Uh, you don't bore us, Zach. Uh, we wouldn't be here if you did. If you did, there you go, right? Uh, Lauren Bott is in the house. Question, I have a cage set up that could potentially hold 18 to 20 quail. I have one breeder set in there now, and I'm wondering if I could put another set in. Uh, would the males fight too much, or should I separate? No, you can put them in together. It's called colony cage, uh, colony breeding. That's what we do in our barn. Uh, we have multiple, multiple males uh, in each cage, and it's not a problem at all, um, as long as their temperament and behavior is fine, and uh, you put them in the right way. On our website, Actually, I have a YouTube video about it too, but the easier way to do is go to our website, go to the blog section, and there's a blog about introducing new quail to an existing flock, and just make sure you follow that when you put the new birds in, uh, and you'll be good to go. It's fine. Jacob says, Zach, I'm sorry I didn't message you. have been dealing with COVID throughout my house, but I had a successful hatch with the last batch of eggs. 19 out of 25 jumbo white, 17 out of 25 gold. Awesome. Congratulations. I will write that down. 19... Oh, crap. I, uh, 19 out of 25 white. Great job. That, that's awesome. 17 out of 25 gold. That's crazy. You got better whites than golds. That's awesome. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Uh, while we're waiting, Homesteads, we love our silver fox rabbits. I don't know what those are. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm walking into all of this. I don't know. If it's not the goats, the pigs, the emus, or the quail... I don't know nothing. Uh, and if it's out of the quail world, I really don't know anything at all. Uh, but we've raised these things and I've been involved. But uh, George has been raising rabbits for quite some time and now we're going to uh, get involved with it and uh, and things like that. Um, so I really don't know yet. But I said, what's best? And he said, we well, should have some big ones that grow out longer. Uh, that gives you more meat. And then you should have some that are really fast, which I believe are Rexes. And I can't remember what the other ones are, but they're big. And I said, okay, well, then let's do that. And that's as much as I know right now. But we'll do it together. Uh, let's see. Dale's Quail says beekeeper here. Very, oh, very cool. Uh, yeah, I definitely, um, I really want to get into it. Kasumi says I'm very interested in full on self-sufficiency. Awesome. Well, we will do it together. Uh, I'm not going to be an expert, but uh, we are going to learn together. And uh, we'll learn from my mistakes and waste my money so that you can just go straight at it. Uh, let's see. Everyday Oil Mommy says, love the self-sufficiency video coming. Awesome. That's wonderful to hear. Jasmine says, yes, learning how to raise your own food, plant and meat, uh, preserving it and basic su sustainability skills is crucial for everyone to experience. I agree. And uh, when, here's the thing, when it's just not um, important to anyone in your circle of life growing up and you just don't know what you don't know, you don't know if you're interested. So we got to tell them that they should be interested and let them make their choice. If they're not, then they're not. But I think I can make a pretty compelling argument uh, that uh, they are and they should be and they will. Uh, I just got to get the word out there. Hey, Zach, sign us up for the self-sufficient community. Awesome. Thank you very much. Katrina says, I think we're all in the same boat right now with being more self-sufficient. I'll be breeding my re meat rabbits at the end of the month. So rabbits and quail for meat and quail and chickens for eggs. Very cool. Uh, Val says self-sufficient sounds great. Looking forward to that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So we wrote down the list. Uh, and again, we're going to do a bunch of videos, just, you know, the list that we're going to do. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to give us, uh, feedback on how we're doing it wrong and this, that, and the other, and we'll listen to that. Um, but, uh, it's mainly just a beginner's guide and let's just go at it and, uh, learn as we go kind of thing. And I'm very excited about it. Um, and, uh, I also have a gift for that is, uh, I really enjoy the ride. Uh, I don't really enjoy when I hit it, you know, like at the end of the ride and we hit our goal and everybody's like, let's celebrate. And I'm like, I don't really care. Let's go to the next goal. But I, I love the ride itself. Uh, so even all the mistakes, I enjoy it. It's something to look back on and, and, uh, be smarter about. Um, uh, yes, and Dale's Quail runs around 85% self-sufficient food-wise on our one acre for family of four. He told us how much he pays in his grocery bill uh, every week for a family of four, and it is awesome, and uh, I hope that we can get there. 
and I will be picking his brain quite a bit. Um, uh, let's see. Looking forward to the self-reliance video series. We have 50 JM eggs in the incubator, hoping we get a good hatch rate. Also, we have done some videos on quail and rabbit processing. There you go. Congratulations. Uh, let's see. Austin Grove says Cotton is here. Welcome. Glad you're here. Rio Cell says, hey, guys, sorry I'm late. Not a problem. Ed got bait donated. Uh, liver your quail for profit video. Can't wait for more. Thank you very much. Loved. I think it said loved your quail for profit video. Can't wait for more. Thank you very much for the donation. Um, I'm going to write that down so I don't have to make Verna do it. And uh, we will put that right back into the YouTube videos. Uh, let's see. Katrina says, been canning and dehydrating for years and getting more into the past few years. Edible landscaping with over 40 fruit trees on my 7,000 square foot city lot. Very cool. Uh, now, with that being said, Jenna's, Jenna's done all that. You know, I mean, you know, she cans and she uh, does that and she's been doing the garden and the greenhouse and the hoop house and, uh, you know, we've butchered cows and goats and pigs and I, it's just... We haven't, it's just kind of haphazard, you know, and I'm never involved with any of it because I've got a business to run. Um, and uh, they really didn't want me to be involved with it because when I get involved with something, I go full force. Like there is, I've got an off or an on switch. Like that's all I've got. Um, and so I talked to Jenna about it uh, on Monday. Well, I talked to George about it on Monday and he's like, you sure you want to do it? And I said, yeah. And he's like, and you're, you're not going to have any time to do nothing. Like, you don't, you work seven days a week now. I said, yeah, I know, but I want to do it. He goes, okay, let's do it. I said, all right. And then I talked to Jenna about it on Tuesday. Hi, dog. Hi. I don't, I don't want, I don't want that right now. They, um, they don't, they don't want that either. Yeah. Um, I talked to Jenna about it on Tuesday and I didn't know how she was going to go because it's kind of their thing and they do it, whatever. And I said, I think I want to do it. And she's like, thank God, let's do it. And I said, okay, let's do it. So uh, Katrina says, oh, nope, not talking. Uh, Jeff Burton says, feed videos say to mix or uh, alternate grow and layer feed when switching to layer. Why? What could happen if you don't? Uh, it's just an easier transition for them. It's also an easier uh, digestion week for them rather than just switching. Uh, so we feed twice a day. Uh, and so when we're transitioning them from... Um, starter grower to layer it's early in the morning we do one at night we do the other and then after the first week we just straight do the layer if you only feed once a day uh i would do half and half then um it just helps with the di that the digestive system it really helps with new quail not becoming prolapsed um it helps them to continue to start laying and not kind of wait for you know till they're 14 weeks old to start laying uh, in my opinion, that is why. Uh, thank you, Dale. Uh, Chad says, hello from Minnesota. Think, uh, think that will be awesome doing self-sufficient videos. Awesome. Uh, I am going to make a ton of mistakes, and honestly, I cannot wait. Uh, David says, hey, Zach, wanted to know your thoughts on using a lighter weight rooster with excellent confirmation to improve the overall confirmation of my jumbo breeding stock. I would not. Um, you use a lighter male, you're going to, you're going to sacrifice a lot of weight real quick. Uh, so that scares me. I do understand what you're, you're doing and I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh, I've made that mistake and I regret it is what I can say. And we had to, we had to fix my mistake. Um, so I, as far as jumbos go and you're trying to increase size, biggest to biggest is what I would do. I do understand because I've been there. Uh, if you want to do it, I support you. Um, but I did it, and I do regret it, just for the information. Um, Marilyn Perry, Perry's from North Carolina, is in the house. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, definitely interested in this new learning. Awesome. Thank you very much, Nikki. Uh, friendly Friends says, wondering if you do international shipping. I live in the Caribbean. I do have freight forwarder that I use for all my American orders, but I need a copy of medical certificate from your farm. Uh, so that's a good question. I actually have a meeting this week with um, Ohio State uh, vet that um, 
looks like we're going to be able to start shipping soon internationally again, which is very exciting because it's pretty much halted all since, uh, I don't even know, no, October of 2019. Uh, co co corona coronavirus started, COVID started, and just all internet international stuff stopped. So uh, it, we're getting a lot closer, so I'm very excited about it. And the meeting this week should be very informative, so I'm very excited about that, and it's looking positive. Uh, holy crap i am so behind here we go i'm gonna talk really fast for about 15 minutes after i take a drink and we're just gonna breeze through to get some questions out of the way because you're probably waiting and you're probably like oh my god just answer my question here we go george is in the house from Asheville, north carolina welcome chad's in the house from tulsa welcome glad you're here um edgar bates says that guy have boxed up four new old Stock military mosquito nets, 5 by 16 hopefully ship tomorrow. Take your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeremy says, howdy from Texas. Welcome. Glad you're here. Bra Richard says, trying to start small, uh, put ad on Craigslist and sold 45 young to one person. Well, that's not small. That's great. I mean, that's good that you're starting small, but that's a huge sale. That's great. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Maddox Farm from George is in the house. Welcome. Susan says, we are blessed by all the information you share. Thank you for all you do. Not a problem. Glad to help. Uh, Frank says, don't hold back, Zach. Thanks for the good info. Not a problem. Ken says, uh, well, or hello from Indiana. Welcome. Glad you're here. Um, Verna says, hmm, how, I wonder how many rabbit cages I can fit in the quail room. There you go. Jamie says, Dixie Delight Farm and Homestead is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Bill from Missouri is in the house. Welcome. Jamie says, been way too long. Been so busy with my quail lately, trying to slow down a little. I hear what you're saying there. Glad you're here. And uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, again, hit the like button, support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Chuck is uh, still here. Thanks. Autumn says, I, only see, I honestly think I have never won anything in a drawing uh, or contest. I thought you won something from us before, Autumn. Uh, S.O. Swanson says, we're a few short on likes. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Thank you very much, S.O. Swanson. Uh, Verna, if you can, uh, tell me a winner right now. Uh, and we're at the one hour mark. So I'm going to get through all the questions and we'll get through. But uh, I do want to announce one winner for uh, 60 free My Shire Far Farm eggs now. Uh, so Verna, if you'll... Uh, comment the winner right now i would appreciate it and i'll try to read while i'm looking for her thing uh with a few short oh nope read that uh ramsey from p ramsey from kansas city missouri thanks for all you do well thank you very much for being here and supporting i appreciate it robert says hi uh rob from oklahoma i'm getting started raising quail that's great if you have any questions feel free to let me know my uh phone number is nine autumn weems there you go um <laughs> there you go. Autumn Weems, you want to message me, uh, text me 937-760-7282. Verna, if you'll put that in the comments again, my phone number, uh, we'll get you taken care of that week. Robert uh, from Oklahoma, just getting started with quail. If you have any questions, you're, feel free uh, to uh, text me. And I also have a playlist on our YouTube channel, My Shire my shire farm this youtube channel and uh, there's a playlist called new to quail and what you need to know i highly recommend you checking that out as well they are short videos not like this hour-long video so far um and autumn weems there you go now you can't say that anymore because you're a winner um jenner from, from east texas is in the house thanks for all you do well thank you very much uh jamie Kreider says getting ready to order some new stock what colors are in the jumbo mix now uh jumbo wilds jumbo whites jumbo egyptians and jumbo white wing pharaohs um there you go uh bonnie says here from o hi okay let's start over bonnie says uh, hi from Ohio. My granddaughters were excited about my eggs hatching and how fast they grow. They usually raise chickens, but we might have to uh, expand the quail. Absolutely. We'd be happy to help. And uh, I'm glad that your grandkids are involved with it and uh, they're interested. That's great. Best of luck to you. Orlando says, question, will there be a shortage in feed due to the economy? If we need to stock up on feed, how do you store the feed from going bad? You really don't, to be honest with you. Um, here's the thing. Quails will pretty much live on anything. So um, we don't want to give them just anything because we want high production. But when it comes down to it, a chicken scratch, which is still cheap, should always be there, is going to be fine. Uh, I think we can get chicken scratch here for like $12 a bag. Now, that's not what we feed. But um, if we had to, then we had to. And uh, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Let's 
well, my mindset is let's focus things that are in our control. Uh, I can't just grow our own feed here. Uh, there's too much stuff that we need, too, not enough space, this, that, and the other. A lot of people couldn't grow their own feed, but let's do what we can do. So they can eat from the garden, they can eat our leftovers, they can eat our, uh, you know, they can do that stuff and um, bugs and stuff like that. I mean, so let's let's try to get the things that we don't have to worry about and that, that can be in our control is my mindset on it. Kelly says, Kelly from Feathered Connections in Provo, Utah here. Just cleaning, uh, cleaning house and chilling. Just put all my 230 eggs in from you and spent an hour putting together my hatching time cage I won today. Hooray. That's great. Congratulations. And uh, let me know how the hatch goes. Is there a feather sexable only mix available? Yes, there is. It is on our website, myshirefarm.com. Uh, and uh, it is. it would come with uh, wilds, Egyptians, golds, autumn ambers, pearls, fab fees, missing one, uh, quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, there's a feather sexable mix on the website. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's what it's called too. Uh, everyday oh and mommy says I'm looking to provide my family with eggs and a small side gig, have extra birds and eggs to sell. It would be nice if they pay for their feed even better if they pay for occasional my shire eggs. We like that idea as well. Uh, keep watching our quail for profit videos and we should be able to help you get to what you're wanting to do. Um, Katrina says, not talking to me. Uh, Carolyn Howdy from Florida. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Katrina says, correction, I'll have to take the deep bed. Oh, no, I don't think that's talking to me either. Uh, Victoria's in the house. Marilyn's in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Rashun is in the house from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, do you have any jumbo? We do. We've got those four different types on the website. We've got jumbo wilds, jumbo whites, jumbo white wings, jumbo Egyptians, and jumbo mix all available on the website. And uh, they're usually I can get uh, the whites, the white, nope, the jumbo whites, the jumbo Egyptians, the jumbo white wings, and the jumbo mix out within a few days. Jumbo wilds are usually always at least on a week wait, uh, but they're going to be the largest of the largest. Uh, the other ones are good, self sustainable sizes, but jumbo wilds are by far the largest, and in my opinion, always will be. That's what they've always been bred for. Uh, Rep Skilling Garcia 4.0 says, yes, your wastewater system tank, does it cut back on the smell? No, it makes it worse. I mean, out in the back, it makes it worse, not inside. We're cleaning the poop every day inside and the water's going out, uh, so it doesn't smell bad uh, in the barn. But if you walked behind the barn, um, whoo, I would not try to light a cigar back there because the methane back there is awful. Uh, Victoria says, do you supplement feeding, uh, with live food? Uh, I used to raise soldier flies and I'm thinking the feed shortage is going to bring me back to it. Uh, we do not. We have way too many for that. Uh, that might be on our list way down the road. Uh, we do have some other things. It's, it is on our list, but it is at the lower end of our list. Um, to be honest with you, the biggest thing on our list right now, uh, that I want to do this by the end of this year is making our pantry and um, getting some canning stuff and getting the canning equipment so that we can pressure it um, and um, a bunch of stuff like that, getting a lot of equipment together, uh, which we'll go through in videos. And I really wanna get some uh, new freezers, uh, if we can, that are energy efficient, uh, that don't take a lot. And then I wanna get some solar panels somehow uh, and have that off grid where our fridge, our water, uh, our well water and our freezers are all on that uh, because that we need that. So that's a big part of it. Um, it's going to be expensive, so that may, may be a long-term project. I'm not too sure. We can definitely get the freezers now and just hook it up to the grid, and you know. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff on our list. I'm telling you, we've got a lot of stuff on our list that we can do. There's a lot of different ways that you can prep and be self-sufficient. And I'm honestly very excited to start. Uh, it's just a um, time and money issue as we right now because uh, all that stuff is not cheap. And uh, getting into bees seems to not be very cheap as well. Uh, so, you know, we got to get the colony. We got to get the queen. We got to get all the equipment. We got to get, and I got to know what I'm doing. So, but I'm excited to learn. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. A uh, friendly friend says, between the nipples and the poultry cups, what would be the best advice? I don't like the nipples. Uh, the poultry cups are fine. Uh, I don't believe you're in 
the U.S. If you are in the U.S., I highly recommend, and I'm actually doing a video on it, I think next week, uh, or in two weeks. I'm doing a video on it in two weeks about the troughs from Winola Ranch, um, because I think everybody should be having troughs. Everybody should just fork over the money, buy the troughs. They are a lifesaver. They save a lot of time, money, energy, effort in the long term. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. But if I don't think they ship out of the U.S., so if they don't, um, I would do cups rather than nipples. I do not like the nipples. But some people do. That's just a personal preference. Uh, Tammy says, hi, from Fred, Texas. How many quail should we have on hand before we consider starting to sell? That is a good question. Um, I kind of answered that in the quail for profit video you want to check out. Uh, it's kind of, I think, part of rule number two. Uh, but, um, you know, let's say you have 50 quail and you get 30 eggs a day. Well, you obviously want to use some... Why are you back? What do you want? I have I have stuff I have to answer. I don't want to. You got to go. Go on. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not doing that. It'll happen in a minute. I'm not doing that. Um, I forgot. No, I'm not doing it. Don't. Uh, I don't remember the question. How many quail? Should, okay, so let's just say you have 50 quail, 30 eggs uh, a day. You got to depend. You got to decide on what you want to do. Do you want to keep some of those eggs for you? If you do, how many eggs do you use? So let's just say you have 20 eggs to sell a day. Well, I wouldn't expand until you can sell those 20 eggs a day uh, for uh, an extended amount of time and you go on a wait and then you keep increasing from there. Uh, Bill says, unfortunately, we will have to jump off at seven or so to watch our Chiefs play. There you go. Uh, does anybody know if the Cowboys won? Because I had to jump on here and, and I didn't see the ending. Uh, Zach, I don't see a video on Scarlet's. Uh, will you make one soon? I thought I did one on Scarlet's. I'm 99% sure I did. Uh, I will look, and uh, if it's not done, then I will make sure that that gets done. Uh, Zaya, doo -doo -doo. Hello, everyone from Chess, Virginia. Welcome, Junie. Glad you're here. Uh, Dan, how far am I? Oh, dear God. Uh, Danielle says, very excited. Some of my quail have gone broody. Can't wait to see if they manage to hatch out some chicks, uh, but not sure how viable the eggs are. Uh, just introduced a new male. Uh, well, best of luck to you, and let us know how it goes. That'd be awesome. Uh, somebody else's quail just went broody. I think it was Katrina not too long ago, and uh, she had some success with it. Uh, do water troughs attract mosquitoes? Uh, ours don't, uh, but I love them. Uh, hello from Louisiana. Zach, what's your favorite way to eat quail? On the grill. Grilled quail. Kelly says, feel the same way about not liking where things are going in the world. We try and teach all we can to see to anyone who will listen in Utah. There you go. Yeah, I think that uh, we just all have to take a big stand on it and uh, just, yes, thank you. Cowboys won, sorry. Um, yes, I, I think that we all need to take a stand and uh, spread the word. Kevin says, how frequent are feet issues on regular wire cage floors? Does PVC coated make that much difference for the added cost? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a lot of issues on regular wire cage, PVC coated makes a world of difference and worth the extra money. Uh, Veronica says, do I have to worry about quail being related for breeding stock? Um, n n no, uh, I would suggest maybe having at least two cages and kind of mixing them back and forth. Uh, but no, no, you don't really have to worry about that. Junie says, Kevin, yes, oh, not talking to me, not talking to me. Grand Tour, Top Gear, yes, thank you very much, friendly friend. Nick says, how long do Caternix quail typically molt for? Will egg laying resume after their first molt? They will. Uh, it does kind of vary as far as how long they molt. Uh, it really varies a lot. Uh, it's usually not too long, though. Uh, a week, five days, two weeks at the most. Uh, I know that sounds weird, but they it really does vary. Um and they will start laying again. Went from 24 eggs a day to maybe eight. If they're lucky, all of my birds are less than a year old. Uh, yeah, so they're just molting. Just give it a couple weeks. You'll be back to normal. Uh, Zach, how often do you replace your males and female breeders? We switch out our males twice a year, every six months. We switch our hens out once a year. We would not be doing that if we were self-sufficient or trying to be self-sufficient in that aspect. Uh, but we do it because we sell so many eggs. We want to make sure you have the best quality product there is. 
Um, you were good. Thank you very much. Pansy Fees are my favorite. The White Wings, then Jumbo Wilds. There you go. Pansy Vs are in my top faves, too. Gorgeous. Absolutely. Have you ever had luck in tr increasing the size of the Pansy Fee by breeding with a Jumbo? Yep. Uh, and that's why they are a decent size now, is because that's what we did. Um, doo -doo -doo. Allison says, Clarkson Farm is on Prime, not Netflix. Just FYI for anyone else looking for it. Crap. Sorry. I apologize. It is on Amazon Prime. I think that's right, because the show that we're watching now is on Netflix. I apologize, everyone. Clarkson Farm is on Amazon Prime. I am very, very sorry. Running Poultry and Aviaries in the house. Welcome. Uh, Junie says, self-sufficient me. Mm, um, Mark, he is from Queensland, Australia. He really got me into gardening for self-sufficiency. He has several how-to grow a ton of videos. Uh, 10 out of 10, I suggest anyone check him out. Very cool. Uh, let's see. I'm going to write that down and check that out. Like it. Uh, let's see. Rip Skilling Garcia 4.0 says, I'm looking into raising guinea pigs for meat. Unlike rabbits, they can be raised on any vegetable matter, including a lot of leaves for common trees and grass clippings and kitchen waste. Very cool. Cool idea. Junie says, would quail con evolve to self-sufficient type con? Yes, it will. It will be. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. I've already got a lot of things in the works. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. A lot of people really enjoyed Chris from Slightly Rednecks uh, talk because he kind of talked about self-sufficiency and talked about uh, quail and rabbits. A lot of people was interested in that, so uh, we're going to bring that back and we're going to keep um, introducing it more and more into QuailCon. Uh, Val is in the house. Just Justin Rhodes is a great family channel. Awesome. I'll check that out as well. Okay, I really got to start talking faster and stop talking so much. Robert says, I used to raise the Flemish Giants, going to raise now Rex or New Zealand. Very cool. Uh, so they the ones that we're getting from George is, are not um, Flemish Giants, but they're like that size, only a little bit bigger, and I cannot remember the name of them. Um, wish I could. Uh, Chad is in the house, donated $5. We'll see... Uh, we will see a pansy tux. Is it possible? A pansy tux? It's possible, yeah. Uh, I haven't worked on it, but yeah, it's possible. Uh, and thank you very much for the donation. We'll put it right back into YouTube and, uh, give you more videos, uh, to help you on your journey. Uh, guinea pigs for meats are meant for pets, not to be a meal. Eh. S.O. Swanson says the people are on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you have to go where the people are. You can't get some people to go elsewhere though they have to know you first. That's true. I like that mindset as well. Uh, Rep, uh, Rep Skilling Garcia says, guinea pigs are a staple meat in Peru. They look good barbecued. There you go. Uh, your choice between nipples and poultry cups for quail. Uh, poultry cups for sure. Uh, Victoria says, do you suggest proactively giving Medicaid a fee periodically through the year or only when symptoms appear? Uh, I would, if you're going to do medicated feed, I'd only do it for the chicks. Once they're a layer, I would not do medicated feed anymore. Uh, it'll affect the eggs, um, as well as you're not supposed to eat meat that is, me is that is on medicated feed for, I, th I think it has to be off for like two weeks. Uh, but that just scares me. So chicks, you can do medicated if you want, can't hurt. Uh, but once they go on layers, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Holler Homestead is a young family being as self-sufficient and remodeling their house. Very cool. Uh, Holler Homestead. Okay, give me a second. My dog. Uh, I read that sometimes the cups get clogged or dirty. Uh, we never really had that. I mean, you do got to clean them out. Um, but, uh, yeah. Jasmine says, love this backstory. I'm so similar to it's so similar to mine. There's a community of people who don't know, but are willing to be ready to learn this stuff. We need those connections despite the crappy social media. Absolutely. I agree. And I think that that helps. Uh, and I think that that has helped our business because I never get really annoyed answering the same questions over and over because I was there, you know? And so, uh, okay, fine. I'm going to let my dog in. I will be right back. I apologize. Come on.
God, she is such a drama queen. Sorry, I apologize. All right. Uh, oop. Oh, crap. Oh, there we are. Richard says, I've been farming for 50 years, going for 50 years. Good for you for turning to the farm life and good luck. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, Orlando says, I am making a cooler style lockdown box. Will a fan be needed if the temp and humidity is correct? Uh, I always like the fans. Um, we have fans in all of our lockdowns, uh, but a lot of people don't. Um, I would put fans in there. Uh, circulation is really good for, for the eggs. Jackie says, hello everyone, new to all this, but very interested, LOL. Hi Zach, a question on your quail for profit. Uh, what do you mean by go on a week wait after selling your 40 eggs, then a two week wait, uh, then a two week wait 100? Um, sure, okay, so what I mean is um, you really don't know where you need to be at. Um, like you just, you just don't know, right? You don't know how many quail you're supposed to have, this, that, and the other. So again, you want to start off small. So the way we did it and the way I recommend is um, let's say that you have 50 quail and you get Let's just say you get 40 eggs a day. We'll use your example, and that might have been my example. So let's say you get 40 eggs a day, and those are all for sale, right? Well, if you're not able to sell those eggs every day, you really shouldn't be increasing. Uh, because if you do that, then you're just asking for your trouble. Because you couldn't sell the 40. Why are you increasing to 100? Because you couldn't sell the first 40. So you want to you want to sell those 40. Now... When you've been selling those 40, you want to sell out. Once you're on a week wait or a two week wait um, on those 40 eggs for a week or two, well then that's a good indication that your customer base is growing and that you're getting repeat business. In that case, you can get, you can double your order. You can double your quail. So now you can have 80 eggs a day. And so that two week wait is going to go down to uh, maybe a one day wait or you're barely keeping above water. Now you're going to increase your customer base, get a couple more customers, advertise a little bit more, and then you're going to start selling every day. Then you're going to start selling, uh, and you're on a week wait, and then you're on a two-week wait. And then if you've been on that two-week wait for a week or two, then that is a good indicator that you can increase, and that will support it. Uh, so I hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't, please ask again, because... Um, it's a very, very important step. Uh, so yeah, if, if I did not explain that correctly or clearly, please ask again because I really want you to understand that for sure. Uh, do you give them sand? Uh, every once in a while, it's not necessary for production, uh, but uh, they enjoy it and uh, happy quail, happy eggs. Uh, Rip Skillion says, I just built a cage that can hold 96 quail. It's eight by three. Unfortunately, my water gravity system is leaking and can't show yet. Uh, well, should be an easy fix. Annoying fix, but should be an easy fix. So best of luck to you and uh, keep us posted. Rabbit waste is awesome for the garden. Absol absolutely. Uh, Testify brother, really? No joke. Well, thank you very much, James. <coughs> I'm assuming that's when I was doing my whole... Uh, tangent rant if you will um let's see Winnie the fields is in the house welcome jacob says i have flemish giant rabbits as well as ducks quail chickens and yorkshire pigs for self-sufficiency and i deer hunt and fish as often as possible so we may buy 10 to 12 pounds of burger a year that's really cool congratulations that's super cool um yeah and we were thinking about it and we're blessed beyond measure i mean we are blessed beyond measure we've got this farm we're kind of off the road we're close to the city, but we're still kind of far away. Um, and, you know, we've got cows and goats and sheep. And no, we don't have sheep. Cows and goats and uh, pigs. And, uh, you know, the pigs are a uh, heritage breed. And, you know, we've got, you know, well water. And we've got this and we've got that. And we've got quail and we've got chickens. we got rabbits. Um, but we're not really doing it on purpose is what my big thing is. We're not... We're doing it because we want to, or we enjoy it, or whatever, but we're not really, it's not, 
if things went to crap, we could be okay, but it would be a completely different lifestyle change for us. And that's not what I want. I want to be comfortable with that. So if anything does happen, then, you know, it's a little bit of a change, but we're, we're okay. We, we know what's going on. And to be honest with you, somebody would have to teach me everything if something had to change right now. And I don't like that. I, I, they, my family doesn't need me to learn when I have to. I need to learn now so that if I do have to, I'm ready to go and I can already support them, is my mindset. But Jacob, you're doing extremely well, so good job. Wanda says, how long have you been in Quail and who uh, mentored you? Uh -huh. um, wheel. We've been uh, raising Quail for about 11 or 12 years. Uh, we've been in business for, I think, 9, 10 years. will be next year, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of help along the way. Um, Robbie helped for a while. Uh, we've done a lot. We, we connected with a lot of old breeders that are no longer in the business. Um, and, uh, we, uh, we picked their brain constantly and they appreciated it. They, they, they liked the fact that we bothered the crap out of them because they, they were getting older and they knew that they wanted to be out and, uh, they wanted someone to, uh, to know what they were doing or, yeah. So, um, a lot of them, a lot of people, we owe a lot of people a lot of gratitude. Susan says probably Flemish giant rabbits, the big ones. They're like that, but that's not them. Uh, we used to have Flemish Giants. That's not the name. I really wish I knew what the fr freaking name was. Autumn's... Oh, I got to keep going. Got to keep going. Going fast. Uh, Autumn says, what is the best age to add new birds? I. What is the best age to add new birds? I have four-week-olds and will need their pens for the chicks and the brooder in two to three weeks. Uh, typically, um, I don't like adding... Uh, different age quail until they're both over six weeks old. Um, typically after six weeks, or I'm sorry, eight weeks. Eight weeks, not six, not six, eight weeks. So if you have six-month-old breeders and you put in four to six weeks week olds in there, um, let me start over. I'm trying to go fast and I'm, I'm screwing everything up, so I apologize. Let's say you have six-month-old breeders and you want to add, not replace, but you want to add to that cage. You put four to six week olds in there, most likely they're they're gonna get beat up real fast. Um, if you put eight week olds in there, they're pretty mature. They're already pretty much laying, and they're about as big as they're gonna get. And they hold their own, and everybody gets along. Uh, so you can do it. I, you got to be careful with it. Uh, if you put them in there when they're eight weeks old, and both of them are over eight weeks old, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, I already wrote it. Well, thank you, Verna. Um, which is good, because I only wrote one down. I did not write Chad's down, so I apologize, Verna. Uh, Chad donated as well. Uh, Val says, I've done the self-sufficiency ride. Didn't make any money, but raised four chicken on our organic meat and vegetables. My grown-up kids said they couldn't have wished for a better life. I feel sorry for city kids. There you go. Uh, yeah, this is not going to be turning into uh, a business. We've got our quail business, and that's the only business that we're going to do. The rest of it is going to be for us and our lifestyle and what we want uh, for ourselves and our future and our kids. Uh, but we want to we want you to follow along on our journey and uh, and uh, learn all from our mistakes. I've done this self. Oh, I read that one. Uh, good puppy. Well, wow. uh, what a pretty dog. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm back. Welcome back, uh, big puppy. She is. Uh, she thinks she's a small small dog. Kathy says, tips on how to get city councils to allow people to raise quail. In July, they allowed four backyard chicken hens, but made me rehome all my quail. Very interesting. Uh, I actually am going to be reaching out. I have not yet. I'm planning on doing it this week. I'm actually going to be uh, trying to sit down with some of the members of our city council. Um, I'd like to get some tips, tips and tricks. We'll see how that goes. Uh, that wasn't a puppy. It, she's she's two years old. She was two years old. Two years old in August. Um, mistakes are the best teachers. There you go. Uh, will growing fodder and other food sources for poultry and livestock be part of your self sufficiency adventures? Uh, it's one of the things I plan on working on this fall winter for our homestead. Uh, it is on the end of our uh, list. There's some things that we want to do first. Uh, fodder. I'm not too worried about. There's other things that we're going to do instead. Uh, but, uh, when we get to it, I wouldn't mind, uh, raising some, that wouldn't be a big deal. 
Uh, new to quail, will the various species interbreed? Yes, they will. Do I need to stick with one of the breeds on your site? Uh, you don't have to. Uh, they all get along together. They, they practice love, not war. Uh, my Jumbo Wild fer Fertility fell 50% in the last month. What do you suggest I do? Uh, switch out your males. I would assume your males are getting too old. Um, that's great. Great. Uh, David says, that's great. Greatly appreciate. I will just stick to biggest to biggest. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to discourage you. And if yeah, that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I did regret when I did it. Uh, Jasmine says, I love the concept of, uh, falling, failing forward. Uh, it's the very best way to learn along the way. Uh, I have done plenty of it and had helped a lot of people by failing, uh, and learning a better way. Absolutely, I think it's the best way to learn, and uh, I have no problem sharing all my failures. Uh, so I'm excited about it. Autumn says, I'm looking into sealing my quail egg cartons because my two-year-old knows that the that this baby's come out of them and he eats them raw. Uh, well, it's not the end of the world, but yeah, you probably want to <laughs> get them out of reach. Um, when you get your rabbits, can you do an underground breeding hutch? Imagine all the possible extra room. Uh, wouldn't be a horrible idea. Uh, oh my god, I'm so excited that day. Should I text you? Uh, yep, just text me and, uh, we will get you taken care of because you are one of the winners. Uh, so congratulations to that. Rashawn says, I really need to replace my Jumbo Wild. The hurricanes hit Louisiana. Uh, do you have any hatching egg Jumbo Wilds? We do. They are available on our website at myshirefarm.com. Uh, be happy to help you out. Uh, I read to use bay leaves to flower, maybe work for feed. Interesting. Very cool. Uh, it should work. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, how do I order a MyShire Farm coffee cup? We don't have any coffee cups. I'm sorry. Uh, we've got some shirts on the website and candlers and some supplies like that. Uh, I was going to go into a bunch of stuff like that, but uh, I'm going to spend more energy on uh, some other things. But thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Uh, how do you boost your sales when laying slows how do you boost your sales when laying slows uh we will get into that um you don't really want to boost sales if you don't have the product though um it, it depends on how it uh, it depends on what avenue you're going down to sell uh if you're doing individuals you kind of just want to back off uh put information out there stay active but you're really not trying to sell uh, if you're trying to do businesses, well, that's a perfect time because that's a slow process. Uh, so we will get into that, but um, typically for the most part, it's good uh, research and development stage when the eggs slow down rather than selling. Um, oh, yeah, we have window clings as well on our website. That's true. Thanks, Verna. Uh, no use it in quail feed. Just add a few leaves throughout. Uh, throughout food. Well, there you go, Donna. Thank you. Uh, fermented feed. Yeah. Uh, hi, Zach. Uh, work hard does pay off. I agree 100%. Uh, Donna says, our bridge is closed. I'll have to go extra hour to buy my feed. Um, that's a bummer. Sorry. Uh, Richard says, I only catch wild swarms of beads uh, to cut costs. There you go. Very cool. Um, Donna says, my quail are in rabbit hutch. I use dog water. Love it. That's great. That's perfect. That's wonderful. Uh, Jeff says, puppy needs love too. What's a sweet puppy? Yeah, she wanted to go inside and she was bothering the crap out of me. Bridget says, love, no love, the tr uh, love, love, no love, the troughs. Uh, poo trays aren't as wet, which means less larva flies, easier cleaning, less smell. I still use pine flakes, just not as much, and everything just slides out. There you go, Bridget. Uh, Cowboys' last second field goal gives the team a badly needed win over. How was it 20 to 17? I don't understand. At least they won. Katrina says, make sure you baby proof your aviary. They fit into smaller areas. You can, uh, yeah, yeah, we're buying new stuff for the aviary this year. What job career do you leave? Did you leave to raise our quail? I was. Uh, like a district manager for retail stores, uh, multi-store manager uh, for retail stores, a couple of restaurants as well. Uh, I had pretty much been in, um, I guess it's lower management, you know, st store to district level uh, for 
13 or 14 years uh, before I started doing this full time. Um, I have a problem with authority. I don't like people telling me what to do. So they always put me in those roles to just stay away from me. Uh, last question. How do you fix Bumblefoot? Uh, I have one quail I just noticed has it. Uh, good question. Um, I don't spend the time doing it. Uh, and we really don't have that many issues anymore with the new cages. Uh, but uh, you can take a pin and uh, prick it, get the pus out. Uh, and um, use some ointment. I cannot remember what everybody uses because I have not used it in forever. If somebody knows what they use for that uh, and they can comment, that would be great to help Ed Got Bait out. Make sure you comment uh, or tag him in the comment. I would appreciate it, uh, but I can't not remember what it is, um, but mainly they go to butcher camp uh, if there is an issue with that is how that goes for us here. Wolfpack says, is the best start out with one particular breed? Uh, of Caternix, or do you start out with two or three different breeds, types? It's really a personal choice. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Um, I am a strong believer that you should start with Jumbo Wilds and then increase as you go. Uh, so get your Jumbo Wilds, get to know them, uh, get to love them, and then you can bring some color in and have fun with it, absolutely, um, is my thought. But you could do a couple different colors at the same time, too. It's what... It's a personal preference. It doesn't hurt anything. They can all go together. They can all go separate. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Whiskey Tango Farm says, uh, thumbs up, y'all. Absolutely. Uh, if you can support the channel by just hitting that thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Uh, Cog Hill Farms, I love. Interesting. Uh, Continental Giants. Yes, that is what they're called. And thank you very much, Donna. They're Continental Giants. I appreciate that. Um, I have, I'm not going to read it. Cider vinegar is good medicine and water. Absolutely. Josh Satin is another awesome channel to check out on YouTube for uh, market gardening and self-sufficient farms. Interesting. Uh, with, uh, John Satin. Josh Satin. Um, yeah, and obviously there's a lot of people on YouTube that's going to do a lot better than me in this self-sufficient thing. Um, but uh, if I can help get the word out, uh, that's really all I... I Extra people doing it is not going to hurt anything, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, Living Traditions is great. I do. I already uh, subscribed to them. Michelle says, sorry, late. Ordered the Fab Fee and Italian salad on eggs. Should get them by the end of the week. There you go. That's great. Best of luck to you. Sorry, couldn't help. Uh, Katrina says, yep, I'm doing a variation of Joel's uh, Rack and House. Cool. Where's your light, silly goose? What do you mean? Oh, shh. Right there. It's right there. I had it, just forgot to turn it on. It was light when I started. Medicated doesn't always mean chemicals. The medicated quail feed I buy just contains apple cider vin vinegar. That's good to know, very cool, thank you very much. Um, it attracts spiders. Uh, LOA, Kristen and Katrina, Verna Young agree. Living Traditions is one of my faves. I guess we should have gotten him a candle for two. Oh, yeah, I could put some candles out here. Set the mood. Uh, Art and Bree do a lot of fermenting and offer uh, offer classes. Art does it with his sister, large family trying to be self-sufficient. They are friends of the Holler Homestead and Justin Rhodes. I got both of those down. Thank you. Uh, wait means your customers have to wait for your product. Yes. Uh, yes. You do want to be on a wait. Um, absolutely. Um, people are more than willing to wait for good quality product uh, than get it fast and now. Um, so yes, a weight is always a plus. Living Traditions helped me decide on quail. Love those two. Very cool. Uh, Homestead Evolution has some great videos on keeping quail. I already have them. Uh, like when Zach says Jumbo Wilds are week out, meaning you order now, the order won't be filled until a week after you order. Absolutely. Uh, I respect your advice. So on the profit with Celadons, I am starting with one color right now. Are the numbers of eggs the same? for them as they are the regular quail or are celadons different. I would treat them as the same. I mean, it's to me, celadons are just like pearls or fab fees or growl fees. It's just, it's going to give you the same thing. It's just a different kind. It's just, it's just cool. And you know, whatever. Uh, and that's fine. That's all good. But when it comes down to it, celadons give you no extra nutrients. Nutrition, no extra, you know, they're not going to be any larger than Jumbo Wilds. They won't be as large as uh, Jumbo Eggs. Um, so Celadons are great to sell. It's a 
good market to sell in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would treat it as any other any other kind. Absolutely. Good question. Happy quail makes me a, makes me a happy gal. There you go. I like that. Another channel is Hidden Heights Farm. Uh, Katrina says to whoever asked about sand bath, we just had to refill ours. Uh, they bathe in it as well as eat it for the grit. It was disappearing fast. There you go. Um, I was looking into the brand. Love the idea of no chemicals. Yes, Katrina, I sure does. This. Uh, our daughter loved, loves Weedem and Reap. They are the reason she won't stop begging us to get goats. There you go. Very cool. Uh, Kevin at Hidden Heights Farm. Oh, not talking to me. Uh, are the rabbits? I bought a buck from George, and I forgot the breed. Uh, so when you remember, let me know. Yeah, it was the... Shoot, I forgot the name. <laughs> Flemish Giants? Fleming Giant? Flem? Crap. Crap. What age do you butcher quail? We butcher ours at eight weeks old. Uh, we do that because it's more cost-effective uh, than growing them out to ten weeks. And it really isn't that big of a weight difference. Uh, Katrina says, I took Chris with slightly redneck advice and put three-week-olds in with the adults in the aviary, and it went perfectly. They're young enough to not have all the competitive hormones. There you go. Katrina says, I have to head out. I'll watch the rest later. Good night, everyone. Thanks for showing up. At what size uh, At what size operation do I need to make 4000 monthly? A big. You need a big operation. Uh, mistakes are not failures if you learn from them. There you go. Um... Yeah, making, I, yeah, well, yeah. You're going to have to have a lot of business to make $4,000 a month. Jeff says, I think it was Einstein that said, I've never failed. I just found a thousand ways that didn't work. Absolutely. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, Wolfpack says, Zach is the best to start out with one type of contrast quail, or can you start out with different types? Uh, personal choice, you can do either one. I highly recommend starting with Jumbo Wilds, but, I mean, you could do 50 Jumbo Wild eggs and 50 Pearl eggs, and you could have color and fun and uh, have, you know, start breeding some cool stuff together and getting new colors and still have the Jumbo meat and eggs. Uh, so it's really whatever you want to do. Um, definitely have enjoyed tonight's live. Thanks, Zach and Verna. Great job moderating as usual. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Um, Richard says, uh, I got bait on, uh, wait, honey is great for Bumblefoot. Oh, there you go. Honey is great for Bumblefoot. I don't know why I had such a problem reading that. Um, we started with 27 and have worked our slow way up to a little over a hundred live quail now working on the size of our jumbos and egg colors. That's great. Good job. And, uh, that is how you would want to do it. Um, if you would want for that, well, we're going to do a math video on the quail for profit and uh, we'll break down uh, how many quail you need to have. Uh, I'm going to do a thousand dollars a month uh, profit. Um, Four thousand is a whole different ballgame. Uh, once you get that high, you need a lot of different stuff. Um, I would not set that as a goal. Um, Zach, thank you for all your hard work. Well, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Hit the like button, support the channel. I appreciate that too. LOL, well, not going to read that. <laughs> Champagne. The last part is, nope, still not going to do I'm not. I'm not even going to try. Hey, I ordered Jumbo Wild Eggs from you, 18 out of 30 hatched. Uh, they are four weeks old, and I'm impressed with the, their size. They are as big as my seven-week-old regular Conturnix. Thanks again, my shire. Not a problem. 18 out of 25. I will take that every day of the week. Uh, we only do numbers that you actually purchase, so we do send you 30, uh, but we only do the 25. Continental Giants. Gosh darn it. Thanks, Robin. Uh, if you want excellent gardening advice, uh, M M uh, Michigan Gardener is great, plus he sells seeds and ships them. Very cool. I'll check that out as well. I take challenges seriously. There you go. Uh, best of luck to you. It's going to take some time, and it's uh, it, there's a lot of extra stuff in there uh, that you would need to do. Um, that won't be in the videos because there's there's a whole that's a, a whole different business looking forward to the next quail for profit video have a great week absolutely thank you and it'll be coming out saturday uh still losing money just got a 900 hundred dollar incubator lol yep yep there's always going to be a startup absolutely there's always going to be a startup 
Um, but uh, it should all pay off. Uh, and don't go too crazy until the quail pay for it. Uh, so that is all the questions for tonight, everyone. Thanks for all staying hanging around. Uh, thank you all for still watching. Thanks for all the ones that donated tonight. Uh, Ed got bait and Chad, I believe, were the two. Uh, so thank you very much to both of you. I appreciate you. And uh, we will put that back into our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for all the likes. I appreciate that as well. Make sure you subscribe. So this week, we're going to introduce a new color. God, I hope. Now, if I don't have the scarlet, I might do the scarlet instead. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'll do, uh, quail for, quail for profit video on Saturday. I'll be doing on all about the color video this week. Uh, I'm hoping this, the Scarlet Fees, which is our brand new color, uh, that we're introducing, but it might be the Scarlet's. I, I gotta get these videos done. Uh, and then as soon as those are done, we're going to be doing, uh, some other cool videos. I will not be doing the self-sufficient playlist until isn't posted. Crap. All right. Well, then I'll be doing Scarlet's this week. Uh, I don't want to post too many days a week, uh, so I'll be posting the Scarlets this week on uh, Thursday, and then I will be posting the Quail for Profit video on Saturday, and then I will see you back here a week from today, Sunday, 7 p.m. We'll discuss it, and uh, hopefully we'll all be able to grow a little bit more. So, thanks for all the comments. I truly appreciate you. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you then.